What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football home over at fakepigskin.com. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You can follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me tonight, I got a special guest. Uh, it's SFB season, and I wanted to get someone who's won SFB recently, and uh, unfortunately, that couldn't happen. But we went way back in the in the the, <laughs> the archives, and we found someone who won uh, SFB four when there was uh, a whole four teams, and and it's Ty Miller. What's up, Ty? Hey, what's up? I'll uh, I'll let the insult slide because you know, hey. <laughs> Uh, no, but in serious, uh, Ty won SFB3. Uh, it was yep. like 100 and something teams when you won it? Uh, yeah, 120, which seems like nothing now, but yeah, you know, considering the time, we're, it was awesome. Yeah, considering we're going up against, you know, 1,000 people. But, uh, right. you know, it's I, I, it's still an impressive feat. Um, and you, when you won it, the, the the big names in the industry were playing. So it, it's it's kind of That's a true. big deal. Yeah. It's kind of a big deal, Ron Burgundy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So I guess just just in terms of obviously SFB eight started uh, what yesterday. Um, yep. Talk to me. Did you have general philosophy? Did you have players you had to have? Did you have anything going in that that was a must? Uh, well, I've been pretty staunch on my uh, my angle of I'm not really going to load up on quarterbacks. I know that seems to be the thing because it's super flex. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the scoring this year, and I don't remember it being like this in previous years but it's six points for a touchdown passing touchdown right but it's negative four for passing interceptions Mm -hmm. so i mean you look at some of the guys here they're gonna be hurting eli manning you Mm -hmm. know whenever he throws his five interception game it's pretty much gonna sink you you know that kind Mm -hmm. of thing but uh Mm -hmm. no i'm i love running backs um and everybody uh kind of goes after them it seems in this um which is nice because it allows the stud wide receivers to drop so yeah i've i've picked up a couple nice ones so far this year too yeah i guess for me in terms of the quarterback i think being able to get some of the guys that can run um and get those rushing first downs because uh so just to generally i mean if you haven't been on twitter like you obviously probably know the rules but it's super flex it's tight end premium uh it's a first down you get a half a point for receivers and running backs um, you know, it's a few unique rules. So go check out scottfishbowl.com uh, for all the rules. But, um, you know, getting quarterbacks that can run, I think, is a help. I think even guys like – so I took Cam Newton as my first quarterback. I took him as my – at the 312. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that just because, it, yeah, he's going to probably throw a few more interceptions and might have one of those games that kind of sink you. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen once I, if I make the playoffs, but, um, I think his rushing ability, I think the rushing touchdowns, I think the fact that Carolina is still going to have him do some things where he runs for a first down here, runs for a first down there. Maybe I can mitigate, you know, so those four, maybe throws one interception, but he gets a couple first downs and now, now it's only minus two instead of minus four. Um, yep. and, and I can kind of survive that. So, uh, you know, you said you didn't want quarterbacks, but then you ended up taking the fourth and fifth round. You took QB seven, Kirk cousins, which I like a lot. Um, and the QB 16, Marcus Mariota. Uh, yeah. I like that a lot as well. Obviously, uh, both Ty and our Titans fans, but, uh, you know, LaFleur coming in the offense, I think is going to look vastly different this year, obviously has the rushing ability. Um, you know, is that kind of what you were thinking with, with Mariota there? Absolutely. I, I, everybody's focused on Derrick Henry and Deion Lewis. You know, that's kind of they're just they're wondering who's going to be the lead back. And I'm sitting here looking at the passing game. Mm-hmm. You know, Rashard Matthews, Corey Davis, Corey Davis flashed a little bit at the end of the year, especially against the Patriots. And he really wasn't healthy all year. Yeah. Uh, he missed all of training camp. It's like one of those if he can stay healthy, I think people are going to be uh, really kicking themselves for underestimating, mm-hmm. underestimating the passing game for the Titans. Yeah, no, I, I'm totally with you, and um, I, I expect to see a vastly different offense. And I know this is kind of something we thought maybe going into last year about, okay, well, they brought in these weapons, and you know, it looks like they're evolving. Well, we forgot that uh, Malarkey was still there <laughs> yeah. uh, running his 1940s offense. So now right. that we actually have a real offensive coordinator, a new, a new coach, Deion Lewis coming in, um, you know, it is kind of interesting to see prices on some of these players. And obviously the Corey Davis hype is rolling. Uh, Delaney Walker is always going to be a valuable weapon. Deion Lewis being there, you know, people are buying these weapons, but then they don't want, they don't want Marcus Mariota. And it's like, 
um, you know, it, it, it kind of, it can't, it's not, you know, it can't be one or the other it has to be kind of both. Right. Exactly. I mean, you, you mentioned Cam Newton. I absolutely believe Marcus Mariota can match Cam Newton's ability on the ground mm -hmm. and potentially he has better weapons around him. I, I mean, I might be a little biased there, but <laughs> if nothing else, I think they're a little equal, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Corey, Corey Davis would be the best wide receiver on Carolina. Uh, yeah. I think between Deion Lewis and Derrick Henry, it can be almost as good, if not as good as Christian McCaffrey. I think D, uh, and Greg, Anderson. Yep. Yeah, and CJ Anderson. I think Greg Olson, Delaney are almost exactly the same tight end. Like, yep. yeah, I don't, I don't think it's crazy. Um, and that was, and and kind of went into my thinking where I took Pat Mahomes as my second quarterback. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. in terms of everyone loves Tyree Kill, everyone loves Travis Kelsey. Uh, I took Kareem Hunt with my first pick, which I was almost shocked to see them there because we'll, we'll talk about your team here in a second. But sure. Um, the fact that he was sitting there, I was I was kind of impressed. But if we're going to go Gaga for Kelsey and Hunt and Tyree Kill and everybody's excited about Sammy Watkins coming in, and like if if all those things are going to be true, doesn't Patrick Mahomes have to be at least like a top kind of 10-ish guy? Yeah, I mean, you look at the coaching. Coaching's mm -hmm. fairly similar. Uh, the, the team around him is pretty much the same, right? I yeah. mean, it's the same weapons as Alex Smith had. And I, I'm excited about Mahomes. I'm I'm really excited to see what he's going to do. I know there's been a lot of hype going into this season and at the end of last season, uh, but I mean, absolutely, I agree with you. If you have the weapons and you trust the team and the coaching, why wouldn't you like the player? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So that was that was kind of my thinking with with those two quarterbacks. And I know uh, in previous years I, I've got stuck with the Daltons and Joe Flacco's and, yeah. and I'm usually okay with those guys, especially in, you know, your normal leagues, but where those interceptions are going to hurt you so much. I, I don't, I didn't feel as comfortable rolling with those guys. So I got a little more aggressive. Um, I do want to talk about your first two picks, uh, for anybody that wants to see, you can go to fantasyinsiders.com slash Scott fishbowl. Uh, with hyphens between Scott and Fish and Fish and Bull. Uh, but it's an awesome tool that uh, Fantasy ADHD on Twitter created. But you can look at everyone's team. You can look at where these guys are going in ADP, all this stuff. Uh, so it's super useful if you want to go pull up Ty's team. And, and it's at I1SFB3, which is a hilarious, <laughs> hilarious name because Ty is no longer on Twitter. But uh, that was very creative, and I, I like it a lot. Uh, but Odell Beckham, Julio Jones, back-to-back. -back. Like, if I do – all of my drafts start that way, um, it, you know, as, as redraft approaches. I'm going to be doing backflips because that's that's an incredible haul. And like I, I, I'll I'll admit, like I took I took Michael Thomas over Odell, uh, mm -hmm. which was I'm I'm kind of like, did I do the right thing there? Uh, but uh, but talk to me about that start. Talk to me about Odell Julio uh, and how excited you were after that kind of first turn. Yeah, man. Uh, when I saw Odell falling, he, I'm just looking at the first downs because we get a half point. <clears throat> sorry, half point for first downs. I'm looking at Odell. I think he's going to get a whole lot of them this year. Yeah. And so I want elite targets, elite level targets, but also guys that aren't relying on the long ball. Yeah. You know, so Odell Beckham can do everything, as we know. Um, and then when it came back around, I was actually I had two guys pre-drafted. DeAndre Hopkins and Julio Jones and I was drafting out of the 10 spot so come back it was 203 and Nuke went at 202 so I Julio I mean I was happy with either one of them really yeah, right um you know my my love for Matt Ryan so I do, you know I do the, the, right <laughs> uh, so yeah Odell Beckham and Julio I feel like uh I, I I do need to get a little bit of depth because I expect to lose Julio for a few weeks at some point yeah um just because of the foot or ankle, whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, I think for the majority of the year, I'm, I'm going to have a pretty pretty steady wide receiver group because of that. Yeah, and I think because of last year's running back kind of production, uh, receivers are going to fall, and especially in this format where everyone's going to go hard after the running backs. Um, if I could start with two of Odell, Julio, DeAndre, uh, Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams, I'm going to be so excited. And that's why I kind of – I either really want to, I either want to pick in like one of the first couple picks, or I want to be at the very end. I don't want to, I don't want to be in that ugly middle ground. Um, right, right. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that was a great start, and then you came back around and you you hit Rashad Penny, who uh, between yes. Voxer and and everything, we we've uh, we've talked more hours about Rashad Penny than than probably any player this off season. But um, 
talk to me about him because obviously he's going to be your probably RB1. He's going to be a guy you play most weeks. Um, and when you're going for those first downs, you need that production from the running back. Uh, Penny was the guy. And, uh, you know, he's going in that kind of third, fourth round range right now um, in, in most leagues. And you obviously were at the higher end of it. But uh, talk to me about him. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, since I got off Twitter, I didn't have necessarily the outlet that <laughs> I've had before. Uh, I, by the way, I still don't really regret that. Um, <laughs> but Rashad Penny, I, I, like you said, you and I talked about him. I, I kept telling you, I'm like, this guy is Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> that's, yeah. who, that's who I see, like the patience. Uh, I listened to all the podcasts, and I heard people ripping his blocking and people down on him and big names not really on him, and you know I don't really get into all that. <laughs> but then he goes in the first round to Seattle, and I kind of felt validated, right? So then the next thing is, well, his offensive line sucks. Well, he's also one of the best running backs when he doesn't have any blocking. So I'm not too worried about that. He's got Russell Wilson next to him. Um, uh, I took him in the third round at 310, so that – that was the downside of taking Julio Jones in the early second because there were 16 running backs taken before Rashad Penny got to me. So at that point, it's I'm, I'm already not going to get one of the necessarily quote-unquote sure guys, uh, but the fact that I love Rashad Penny, uh, the team he's on, the situation he's in, I absolutely think he's going to get fed as much as somebody like Kareem Hunt did last year. And if he stays healthy, the team's good around him. I think he can just outperform that by a lot. So, you know, you got to take the hits uh, when you decide to, you know, skip out on a position. Uh, and I was happy he got, he got back to me, honestly. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I'm 100% with you. Uh, I think the volume is going to be there. Uh, I think this is a team that's recommitted to the run. And uh, I also selected him. I got lucky. I took him with my 512. Um, yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. yeah. So and, it, and it's it tells you the difference with these leagues. It really depends on who's in your league. It, it depends on how comfortable everyone is with certain positions, where they tend to lean, um, all that stuff. And you could have one league where uh, one 12 team division that goes crazy for running backs. You could have one that is all quarterbacks. You could have one that waits on quarterback and tight end. Um, it, it's so different that, that you can't really – like it's fun to look at ADP and stuff, and you get a good idea of kind of general range. But if you really want a player, you know, might, you might have to go around early. You might have to go half around early um, t- to kind of make it work. Uh, another guy that you're in on that I also got uh, in the same round, actually, uh, Trey Burton. You know, yep. obviously tight end premium. It's going to be a nice little boost, but y- you're excited about him and his transfer to Chicago? Yeah, absolutely. I I was looking at this. uh, I had pre-drafted two guys. It was Marvin Jones and then Trey Burton. And, of course, (laughs) Dynasty Frank snagged Marvin Jones, the pick before me. So, you know, uh, so I ended up with Trey Burton, which I'm happy about. Yeah, Uh, I I totally think that he could end up being, you know, maybe the number two, number three receiver as far as targets uh, in that offense, especially with Mitchell Trubisky. So. Um, I'm excited about having Trey Burton. And then on the next turn that I got around, I ended up with Will Fuller. So, yeah. and I didn't get Marvin Jones, but I felt like I got a, a decent replacement in Will Fuller there. Yeah. I think there's a lot of potential, obviously in Fuller. And if, um, uh, Deshaun, Deshaun Watson become, gets back to kind of what he was last year, uh, Will Fuller should be really good. So, and I, I, I'm with you on Burton. Uh, I'm a big fan. Obviously I took him myself. Uh, the Matt Nagy thing, like if he can basically put him in that Travis Kelsey role, like that right. could be so nice in Chicago. Oh, um, yeah. I, I figure Allen Robinson, Tariq Cohen's going to have a lot of work, you know, and then I think Trey Burton could, could battle right in there. Yep, 100%. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll hit on some of your running backs before we, uh, before we run and hide. But um, so Rashad Penny, obviously, you went and got – but you added some nice depth. You got Jay you got Jamal Williams, who, you know, is probably um, your fa- obviously your favorite guy in Green Bay. Um, starting to get a little bit of a, a little bit more buzz just because of the Aaron Jones suspension. And then C.J. Anderson, who I think is actually a really nice call. Um, talk to me about kind of, uh, I guess, these three guys and, and kind of what you're expecting. Yeah, I think a lot of people have been sleeping on Jay uh, I, I think the fact that LeGarrette Blunt went away. Um, they they worked him towards the end of the year, and I think that if he gets a full load, especially with an off season to actually learn the offense, mm-hmm. uh, Carson Wentz is going to get back. I think he'll be 
just fine. I mean, he may not get all the carries. You have Corey Clement, and then I don't know about Wendell Smallwood, Darren Smalls, <laughs> or Darren Sproles is there. Um, but yeah, then like you said, Jamal Williams. I love Jamal Williams. I liked him as a rookie coming out. That was the guy I was targeting in dynasty drafts in the second, third round. Yeah. Um, I know Twitter loved Aaron Jones. They probably still do. Um, <laughs> but Jamal Williams was my guy, man. When he got the carries, he actually performed pretty well. Uh, Ty Montgomery is still there, and in this specific draft, Ty Montgomery actually went first of the three, and I took Jamal Williams, and right after that, Aaron Jones went. That's mind-boggling. Uh, Ty Montgomery yeah. went first? Yeah, and that, that might be something, you know, I don't know. Somebody just maybe loves him from a couple years ago. Yeah, insider information. Uh, yeah, exactly. That is that is interesting, but, yeah, I like Jamal Williams a lot. I keep going back and forth with these two guys. Uh, Aaron Jones is obviously explosive, but – if Jamal plays well to start and, and kind of looks good and, and, you know, Aaron Rodgers trusts his blocking and all that stuff, that could be his role. And, uh, you know, in this format, C.J. Anderson's – I think he's going to get a little more a little more work than people expect um, and, and get those first downs. But I want to talk Ajayi because it it's boggles my mind how much things can change from one year to the next. Jay Ajayi was – I took him fourth overall last year in the SFB. Yeah. Fourth. Yeah. Not, not fourth round, number four. And this is a guy who's consistently going in the first round of SFB drafts. And granted, he wasn't amazing last year, and I get it. But, you know, to get him, you know, in the sixth as, you know, a top 25 guy instead of a top five guy at the position, I think that's nice value. And I think it's a good gamble um, for, for owners, you know, heading into redraft leagues and heading into to other kind of, um, you know, best ball type formats. Oh, definitely. I mean, the best thing that can happen for people going into their drafts as they come up in, you know, August, I guess here, uh, is that everything stays the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no one's pushing JJ really. I mean, I know there's been some little rumors about how they think he can be a full time back and whatever. I mean, I absolutely think he can carry that. You know, yeah. I, there's nothing. I, everybody's worried about his knees, or they had been worried about his knees. Uh, so what if he has to take some plays off? I mean, if he's there for 20 carries or 20 touches a game. I mean, he's going to be a stud. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm 100% with you. I think it's good if Corey Clement gets involved, but yeah. I still think there will be enough pass work for Ajayi. I think this is an explosive offense that's going to find a lot of room uh, to score points, to score touchdowns, and I think he'll be involved. And, I, you know, I think it's easy to kind of look at uh, uh, that situation and be like, well, I don't know. Um, but, I mean, we've seen when, when, you, when you have – running backs who get the majority of the touches on high scoring offenses they they they're fantasy producers this is what happens um, yep. you know even in situations like new orleans last year where they had two running backs who still got all you know a ton of work and mark ingram it was still valuable as even with alvin Kamara going you know ham so if C- Corey clements <laughs> chris thompson at best like there's so much room for him to produce and and uh, you know, score for fantasy owners. I guess uh, so. As the you know, your your ten picks in uh, was twenty two rounds. Yeah. You ha- you have yep. you have positions you're thinking about. You have um, anything that you're like, ooh, I wish I had done this, or um, you know, you're you're thinking I need to kind of make up ground here. Yeah, I, I mean, I have one tight end. I, I need to get, I would say, two more by the end of this draft and there oh. Trey Burton is the guy I'm looking at every week. So now it's kind of uh, somebody like maybe a Hayden Hurst, which I do mm. like Mark than uh, more than Mark Andrews. It's, you know, somebody that's going to be pushed way down the line yep. that can still, I mean like somebody even like Eric Ebron, we don't know people, yeah. Jack Doyle, Eric Ebron, he might pop, you know, yeah. Ebron um, is a but, name I like. Uh, ben yeah. Watson is a really good name. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jake, Butt. Uh, Luke Wilson up in Detroit. Like, there's going to be room with Ebron gone. So, uh, what do you think I, about uh, Nick Vanette in I, Seattle? I, I like him too. I think yeah. there's uh, obviously yeah. a, a gaping hole with Jimmy Graham gone, with Luke Wilson gone. Uh, if he can step in and, and be useful and be able to block for the first and second down, I think he'll get plenty of looks on third down. Because, I mean, it's yeah. Doug Baldwin, and, you know, we're hoping Tyler Lockett steps up and, and they have some pieces they're kind of putting together but uh there's definitely going to be opportunity and targets up there yep yeah that's kind of way i'm looking at it i mean he's a he's a nice flyer late you know and that's kind of how i roll too usually is like i want to i i'm willing to be comfortable and wait on tight end but 
um, you know, I just when when I when these guys pop, I have to I have to take shots. So I did take I took Trey Burton, like I said, but I also took Evan Ingram uh, oh, yeah. in six oh one. So and you know, I guess it, do you think he had he like for me he has the ability to be up there with Zach Ertz, to be up there with Travis Kelsey, and um, kind of be in that conversation. It, it, do you do you think he has that ability in year two? Yeah, I don't see why he wouldn't. I mean, he was already very good last year, mm-hmm. and uh, I actually think Odell Beckham coming back is going to make him better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's going to take away some of the the coverage. The safety won't be able to sit there and wait for Evan Ingram to cross the field. You know, it's uh, especially with Saquon now. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be there's a whole lot of people looking uh, to watch out for there. <laughs> yeah. And that goes back to Eli. If Dude, you trust Eli, that's what I'm to saying. Not throw four or five interceptions a game. There's a ton of of, of weapons there that's what i'm saying like if we like saquon and we like odell and we like ingram and you know the sterling shepherd, Sh- shepherd hive yeah. is out there and uh I, you know eli manning that the the interceptions might kill you but i think even in this format like if he was my qb3 i'd be pretty dang happy yeah absolutely um, you know Jameis winston fell to me and uh if you check out fake pigskin today um i will have an article up on kind of my team through eight rounds. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the direction my team's headed in as well. Um, and I, I love where, where my team's at because I have so much flexibility. I have a couple tight ends, a couple quarterbacks. Uh, I could use some running backs. Obviously need some receivers, but, you know, I'm going to take my shots kind of in these middle rounds on, on guys that I can play every other week. And um, it will be interesting. Uh, and then well, before we get out of here, one more thing. Uh, in terms of in season, obviously the the fabs a little bit different. In SFB, are are you a, a person that wants to kind of get your guys in the first couple of weeks so they can help you before, uh, you know, the basically all the studs are gone, or uh, are you comfortable waiting until the the right moments there and then pouncing? Uh, it depends on who it is. I know a couple of years ago James Jones was the big name. Everybody was dumping all their money <laughs> on him. I forget who it was last year, but. I mean, that's kind of the, the way this goes. If yeah. if it is someone that's, you know, a hot free agent signing, like DeMarco Murray, if, if he goes undrafted in SFB and then signs with a team like Indianapolis, yeah. I could see him. people spend a lot of money on him. But I'm, I'm more so going to, you know, I might put some feelers out there, but I need to save some money just in case I have a major injury because there is no trading. So yeah. <laughs> uh, you better have depth and you need to have some cash. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, especially if you – if you draft, you know, a stud running back and nobody expects him to be anything. And then all of a sudden they go down and the backup steps in and oh uh, look at how he's taking, you know, Thomas Rawls a couple of years ago. Right. Great right. example where he just came out of nowhere. So uh, it's always good to have that money. All right, Ty, uh, this was a blast. I appreciate you jumping on um, and, and good luck with the rest of SFB. Thanks for having me on, dude. It was good to talk to you. All right. Talk to you later.